Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And woo, we've got a story for you today. And I apologize in advance if it kills any of your brain cells, but we've got to cover it because we've got major journalistic outlets talking about the Activision Blizzard pending acquisition by Microsoft, and in my opinion, doing it very poorly. Now, if you are interested in more of the details about Microsoft potentially purchasing Activision, we've got a playlist here, Microsoft times Activision. But with that out of the way, let's dive into the news that came out today, where one Mr. Jason Schreier of Bloomberg tweeted the following, Activision shares have been hovering around $76. Anyone who buys now will receive $95 per share if the Microsoft deal is approved. That's quite a return with a discrepancy suggesting that the market believes the deal will fail. Now, outside of the fairly traditional Wall Street stock price reporting consisting of a market's belief in something, which is, of course, an aggregation of hundreds of thousands of millions of transactions in any given moment, and the reluctance that I have to ascribe such a market with a belief of any kind, I think it is fair to read that tweet and the Bloomberg headline that follows, Wall Street is betting that Microsoft Activision deal will fail as standing for the proposition that you can look at the market price available right now for Activision Blizzard and say that Overall, investors on Wall Street are putting their money on the Activision Blizzard deal falling through. Now that in and of itself is a problematic statement. And we're going to talk about why at length with the promise of lawyer math, which I know is a subset here of virtual legality that some of you very much enjoy. I will, of course, give the proper disclaimers when we get to the lawyer math section, because you should not trust lawyers with math. But the headline, Wall Street is betting that Microsoft Activision deal will fail, struck me as a little bit wrong. And so I read the article and found a little bit more to talk about. Wall Street is betting that Biden antitrust enforcers could unravel one of the largest mergers in U.S. history, says Bloomberg. Microsoft's $95 offer is a 23% premium over Activision's current share price, indicating investors see risk the buyout won't close as planned. Now that's already interesting in so far as it's a bit of a walk back from Wall Street betting against the deal, right? In my mind, if you're betting against the deal, the deal will fail. You are acting through your investments, through your cash uh, on the premise that this deal isn't going to go through, which if we're just being honest with one another here, and I, I like to recommend that here in virtual legality, would suggest that the price would be closer to where it started before the Microsoft deal was announced then where it's announced to actually end if the Microsoft deal goes through. And that's not the case at all. But the article itself says investors see risk, the buyout won't close as planned. And that's self-evident. So self-evident that it doesn't make a good headline. It barely makes a good news article or opinion piece because at the end of the day, yeah, it's not at $95. Part of that is because certain portions of the investment market believe it won't go through. Is that a majority of the market? Does that indicate that the market believes something? I would argue that it is not. This risk premium, as reported by Bloomberg, is more than double that of Twitter Inc. following Elon Musk's offer and higher than most. Now, you want to put a pin in this because this is a very interesting thing to say. And of course, it's not like we've covered Elon Musk extensively in this space. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how this long form Elon Musk, the buyout of Twitter playlist got here. I apologize for that. Uh, everyone. Uh, But suffice it to say, if you look through the merger agreement and the SEC filings for Elon Musk and Twitter, you find out they don't believe that there's a significant regulatory concern at all. And they, in fact, think that their deal will close within the next six months. Now, how does that differ from the Microsoft deal? Of course, Microsoft announces in January of this year, 2022, that they're holding on to the deal potentially all the way until the summer of 2023. And we'll see that misreported in the Bloomberg article as well in just a minute. But when we talk about why share prices might be different, you want to think about that because Elon Musk and Twitter think their deal is going to close in the next six months. And Microsoft and Activision are still reserving at least 12 months, probably 14 months from this moment in time. And that matters a whole heck of a lot. Continuing with this article, Tough talk from President Joe Biden's antitrust enforcers is fueling investor fears 
that the deal could be blocked or subject to delays, even if it prevails, said Matt Peralt of New Street Research. And I think Matt Peralt is right. If you're looking at this deal and you don't know what the Federal Trade Commission is going to do because the Federal Trade Commission has been rattling its, slave, uh, its saber on and on and on about antitrust and mergers and changing merger guidelines and looking more closely at big technology operations, you are well within your rights to say, hey, there is a better chance that the FTC acts here in 2022 than if we had been predicting this in, say, 2018. Absolutely accurate. Is that a majority of the market? No. And I think that's self-evident from the price. Fears of a legal challenge are well-founded based on Khan's statements. That's Chairwoman Khan of the FTC. Opposing growth via acquisitions by big tech platforms, said Jennifer Ree, an antitrust analyst with Bloomberg Intelligence. Now, I can't get so far as to say whether something is well-founded or not. I can say it's certainly worth noting, or in fact, I have said that here in virtual legality. Should we be taking into account what Lena Khan is saying about the FTC, about acquisitions, about antitrust? And I think we should, and that discounts the price a little bit. Does it mean we should be positive the deal isn't going through? Again, I say the market speaks for itself on that point, and we're going to get to that lawyer math in just a minute. As I promised, the next thing that's misreported by Bloomberg is the following. The merger, which has until June 2023 to close, is the way that they open one of their sentences here. And I can't for the life of me figure out how they arrived at has until, right? What happened is that Microsoft and Activision announced that they anticipate that the deal will close by June 2023. They actually refer to it in fiscal quarters, but that's neither here nor there. They think it will close by then. What happens in July of 2023? Does everything go boom? No. The two parties are still able to look at their document, potentially revise it if it's taking longer than they expected, and move forward with their lives. There is no has until. If you're sitting there on July 1st, 2023, and the merger hasn't completed, it doesn't mean that it can't complete. So has until is putting a timing pressure within their analysis that does not exist. And you might think I'm harping on very small bits of language here, but this is a major journalistic outlet that is reporting to financial investors and potential financial investors. And quite frankly, I demand a bit more accuracy than what I am seeing in this particular article. Now, we do have to give our hats off. We do have to stand up and give applause to Michael Pactor, who I've spoken about in virtual legality, who I disagree with on some aspects of this, what the consent decree might involve if the FTC and Microsoft were to agree to one, et cetera, et cetera. And he gets reported on in Bloomberg as follows. Not everyone is worried. Wedbush Securities analyst Michael Pactor places the odds of an FTC lawsuit at 10% and the chances of winning a case at 0% due to the difficulty in defining the concentrated market that this merger would cause. And while a lawyer is very unlikely to ever guess something at 0%, that's a guarantee. We don't do that in the field of law. It is worth noting, he actually expounds on this in the article and says, well, look, the FTC might try to bring something up, but I believe Microsoft would call their bluff. And this is a very difficult case to bring. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. I have throughout this playlist, framed an FTC potential block as effectively a political maneuver that the FTC might decide to do because they have said these things about technology and they would try to frame it as something related to cloud computing or subscription gaming services and a monopoly in that specific, very narrowly defined market. But if Microsoft decided to call their bluff, the FTC is not the final decider on these things. They would actually have to go and defend their position in federal court, and I would like Microsoft's chances of winning in all likelihood. Obviously, it's all hypothetical because we can't actually look at an FTC document or lawsuit that doesn't exist, but I also, like Michael Pactor, have difficulty imagining a world in which the FTC could actually win a federal challenge based on what we know about antitrust law as it stands today. In fact, that's why I looked at the senator's letter to the FTC. That's why I looked at the Time to Worry video and I said, look, the FTC, if it decides to focus on labor negotiation power or take into account all these other things that Supreme Court precedent doesn't allow for a current interpretation of the Clayton Act, it's likely to get smacked down at basically every level south of the Supreme Court of the United States. And so I agree with Michael Pactor on that point. But that didn't assuage Bloomberg from saying that Wall Street is betting against the deal with absolutely no evidence of the same. And in order to understand that better, we have to do lawyer math. 
As you can see right now, Activision Blizzard is trading at about $76.90, which is actually up about a percent, just under a percent from where it started. And there's reasons for that. We will talk about that at the end of the video. But suffice to say, for purposes of our analysis here, it's trading at about $76 and change. So we can look at what we would expect the share price to be. And this is clearly what Bloomberg based their analysis on. I will give you a disclaimer that Bloomberg did not decide to give you, which is all of this is proxy math. I'm going to talk about expected values. I'm going to talk about discount rates and inflation. And those are essentially standing in for other more complicated formulas. In fact, if I were to go to my statistics professor from back in the day, or heck, even my uh, investment discount rates or taxations professor from law school, they would look at this. They, pro they might throw up. They might spin in their grave, depending on which professor we're talking about. Uh, but for purposes of this conversation, it is useful enough to understand what's happening here and why Bloomberg is so very, very wrong. So remember... Their premise is that Wall Street, on the whole, as a collective, is betting against this deal. So we look at this. We say, you're 100% sure that you will be paid $95 if you hold a share of Activision at the end of the day. If you are 100% sure, what is the expected value of that share? It's $95. I know, this is really good math. This is why I say it's lawyer math, right? So what would you pay for that if someone was offering it to you? I say here $94.99. The point is you would pay something pretty darn close to the $95 because you're making money. It's no risk, easy enough to do. You're going to pay something pretty darn close to $95. And that's what Bloomberg based its analysis on. Now, pretend you're not 100% sure. You're still going to get paid at the end of the day. But what if you're only 81% sure that the deal is going to go through? Well, it's still worth $95. So what is the expected value of that share. You're not quite sure if you're going to get that $95, but if you do, it'll be at the end of today. Well, it's 81% of $95. It's $76.95. So you'd pay about $76.94. So if you were getting paid at the end of the day today for $95 of the shares, this number 7670 pretty much looks like you've got an 80% belief that the deal is going to go through. Is that Wall Street betting against the deal? I would argue vociferously that it is not. Now, what does betting against the deal actually look like? Well, if you're 49% sure you'll be paid $95 if you hold a share at the end of the day, what is the expected value of that share? $46.55. So what do you pay? $46.44. And it might be even less. Like I said, all proxy math. Sorry, professors. You're going to pay less than what the expected value is. You might pay a lot less because this is a highly variable transaction right now. It's 50-50. People don't love that level of risk. So you might actually take a bigger discount than that because you don't want to just lose $46. And that's what you're looking at right now. You might split that even more in half. If you're truly betting against the deal, you're offering basically nothing for these shares. That's what it looks like in practice. You got a $76 price. It's 81%. But I'm not done, right? Because as I mentioned, when we talked about the Elon Musk deal, what is so important about the difference between the Twitter deal and the Microsoft deal is that Elon Musk and Twitter think this is going to get done real fast. And they only gave themselves six months to actually get it done. Now, there are extensions if there's regulatory concerns. So it's not a perfect an analog, but it does mean that the investors that are looking at this particular deal are thinking that they're going to get paid out pretty quickly. And why does that matter? Well, let's say you're 100% sure you'll be paid $95 if you hold the share that's offered to you today in 12 months. Now understand, Microsoft and Activision have actually reserved another two months from there. So all of this is actually a little generous to the price. What would that be worth today if inflation is 8.5%? And again, here's where I apologize. Inflation isn't a perfect proxy for the discount value that you might otherwise attach to your money, but it is a useful metric. And most importantly, what I'm trying to establish is where we expect the direction of these prices to go, right? So $95 in 12 months, if we just take the inflation rate as a proxy for what you could otherwise do with your money, again, not perfect, but pretty good, it would be worth about $87.50 right now. So you're sure you're gonna get $95 in a year, you'd pay $87.49 or so because, hey, you're going to pay all the way up there. It's a bidding market. It's going to be pretty close to what that 8750 is. Now, why do I use 8.5%? Because as we see here in the Wall Street Journal, that's what U.S. inflation is listed at for March, hitting a four-decade high. 
And that's without even going on and on about the fact that we calculate inflation now differently than we did back when we were having all the inflation problems in the 70s. And this number would actually be a lot higher. Let's skip all of that and just take 8.5% as our flat basis here. If you're 87% sure you'll be paid $95 if you hold a share in 12 months, you take that at 87.50 and what's the present value of that? That's 76.12 or 76.11 that you might be willing to buy a share for. $76, right? So what we see is if we take into account the present value of the money, especially in an inflationary environment, whatever you think here, this is all proxy math or lawyer math as I describe it here, that percentage is actually higher than you think it is because people are discounting the price for the fact they're not going to see money for 12 months or 14 months. So you get a number like $76, even if you're 87% sure that the deal is going to go through. The market is not only betting for the deal to go through, it thinks it's more likely than I do, <laughs> right? So I think it's probably at a 70-30 clip, but when we're talking about headlines that feature what the Wall Street situation is, they're pretty darn sure that this thing is going to go through right now. And what does that number actually look like if they're not, if they're betting against the deal? Well, again, looking at that 49% number, you get a price of like 42 bucks. And instead, what we see today is 76.70. But that didn't prevent Bloomberg from going out with a headline that says Wall Street is betting that the deal will fail. And to me, that is basically unacceptable. I do a virtual legality episode like this because that headline is frankly crazy. And I understand how they got there. They said, hey, look, it's discounted from $95. If you thought it was going to go through, it'd be pretty close to $95. Seemingly not taking into account anything about the time period it would take for your shares to be out of your hands, for money to be locked up in Activision Blizzard, but also failing to take into account that $76.70, realistically, is pretty close to $95. If you thought you were going to get it at the end of the day, you'd pay $76.94 or so if you were about 80% sure, right? And that's not happening. Now, as I promised, the price has gone up a little bit today. Why? Because despite what you might have read in various places, and this isn't false news here, the SOC Investment Group urges Activision shareholders to vote against the Xbox deal. This deal was always destined to go through. And in the shadow of a article like Bloomberg, and I say go through from the shareholder perspective, it is no surprise that Activision actually put out a press release earlier than they had anticipated doing in the proxy statement that was released. Business Wire, Activision. Activision Blizzard announced that its stockholders approved Microsoft Corporation's proposal to acquire Activision Blizzard. More than 98% of the shares voted at the special meeting were voted in favor of the proposed transaction. 98% of the shareholders. And this was realistically never in question. You've heard me say in virtual legality that that deal was going to be voted up. It was never anything that should move the needle terribly far in either direction for the market because this was almost a fait accompli. Now that it's done, you see a 60 cent bump or so in the share price. But what the price is holding back for is some kind of limited percentage of the FTC acting against the deal, absolutely right, and the time value of lost money. You go, you buy a share right now, you don't get it back for 12 to 14 months, you have to take a discount on what you could otherwise do with that money, especially when interest rates are in flux, when inflation is rampaging across the economy. And so you look at this and you just wonder how an outlet like Bloomberg could possibly put up a headline like this, which is why I put out a tweet that said, there is absolutely no indication that Wall Street believes the deal will fail. They're trending at 70-30, and I was actually a little light in what the trend lines are with a year plus of time value of money discounts in an inflationary environment also incorporated into that price. But you don't have to take my word for it. You can instead take Bloomberg's which changed the headline that goes out to search engines instead of betting against the deal to Microsoft Activision raises Wall Street fears over antitrust risk. Definitely Bloomberg's not backing up their own authors and with very, very good reason. This 
has been virtual legality for today. If you enjoy these kinds of conversations about the business and law of video games, technology, pop culture, and more, please consider supporting the channel at Utreon, which gets the most money over to us rather than the platforms, or Patreon. Otherwise, subscribing, telling your friends, upvoting, engaging, commenting, every little bit helps. And as an aside, this Sunday at 11 a.m., Seasoned Gaming's 200th episode of the BitCast is going to have, hopefully, a parade of guests and all sorts of fun stuff that we're going to share with you on that channel. If you're interested in hearing more from the gaming side of what I do, please come check us out. We have fantastic conversations. Again, that's Sunday at 11, and you can see in the description of this video a link right to that channel. If you caught this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it as a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.